Hi there, I'm Lisa. This is Ted, my partner, and their best friend, Hans the dog. On the 18th of March 2020, when COVID-19 spanned the globe and the world began to lock down, we decided to turn our lives upside down and begin the adventure of a lifetime. We threw in our jobs, packed up the car and purchased this 14th century Monument Historique de France. You have arrived. Woohoo! We have arrived. <laughs> With no previous experience, just £80,000 budget and a tent as a temporary residence, we plan to renovate this former House of Tabellion into a family home and thriving business. Learning new skills along the way, we have one year to bring this ancient Relay de Post back to life. We invite you to come along for the ride. So strap yourselves in and let the fun begin. Hi everyone, so as promised, today I'm going to show you how to make a Roman blind. Um, if you're new to the channel, then please subscribe and click the notification button, but um, go back and take a look at what we've been up to. We moved into this 14th century chateau about seven months ago and have been renovating it ever since. And we've got a lot more work to do. So um, today we're doing a Roman blind and um, you would have seen in the last video that I did a quick um, video on, uh, on doing the Roman blind and said that I would upload the full one, uh, the full works if you wanted to see it. Now I'm no expert and the last time I did it in the video was the first time I made a Roman blind. So um, there are lots of tutorials out there that I would suggest you watch. But this is kind of my take on it, and it's how to do it DIY style without having to buy a Roman blind kit, because they're quite expensive. They're about 28 quid, as I've found so far. Um, I haven't found any in France. So, um, yeah, I've been uh, doing it myself. So this is a quick and easy way of doing a Roman blind. Now... The material I'm using today is an old set of curtains. Um, I've got loads of this material, and um, it was actually given to me by, there was a theatre that was closing down, and this was their theatre curtain. So I've got loads of this. So I'm going to use it in the tea room. So today I'm going to do the tea room Roman blind. Now, the tea room window has three sets of panes that all open indi individually. So I'm doing quite thin, long Roman blinds, but you can change the way I do this um, to fit whatever window you need really. It's so basic and easy, it's, it's really good. So, first thing you need is uh, your top fabric. Mine is this lovely velvet red, and you will need a lining fabric. Um, I've got this Hessian fabric. Now, just to save time, I've cut it all out and uh, marked it all out, but I'll just talk you through what I've done. So the measurements of my window, are, let me just check I'm telling you this right, are 28 long and 43 wide. So you need to measure where you want your Roman blind to sit. The width of your material needs to be the width of your window, but add on your hem either side. Now, I've done a very small hem only because the, the curtain I was cutting up to fit three sides um, has not uh, only sort of fitted with a very small hem. And it's very thick fabric, this, so it doesn't really need a big hem at all. But if you're doing thinner fabric um, or lighter fabric, then I would suggest you have a hem of about um, one and a half, um, one inch, one and a half inches, and double hem it so you fold it over. So you would allow either side your hem allowance, uh, whatever that may be, whatever you want it to be, uh, whether you want it a small hem or a large hem. And then your length, on, and that's on your lining fabric and your top fabric. On both fabrics as well, your length, you want the length of your window, you want to add on the top and the bottom about three inches of hem because you want to be able to fit a wooden pole um, or a piece of wood at the top, which I will show you in a little while what, what I do to be able to fix it to the window. Um, but you want to allow three inches top, three inches bottom, so add that to the length of your window. But then also you want your dowel pockets. Now your dowel pockets, um, I've got mine at four centimetres um, on this one because I'm using quite small 
Dell, but it's copper pipe, um, some thin copper pipe, because these are really heavy curtains, so I need something quite heavy um, to, to be able to, to layer them properly and for them to, to um, lift up and close down properly. Uh, but you can use wooden dowel, bits of wood, anything that will fit through that will kind of what, use as a weight in your curtain. And then what you do is you measure whatever it is you're using and make sure that you have enough allowance for each of your pockets. So you need to add that to your length as well. So here we have my piece of fabric, which is my length. Um, I've got my top fold here. So this is my top one and a half inch seam because I'm going to double fold it, and then that will be my second. Now, the bottom part of mine, because my, these curtains aren't long enough for what I need, um, I want to add on a contrasting fabric on the bottom. So the bottom isn't hemmed, and I'm going to use this beautiful fabric that I've got that's got really beautiful colourings in it, and it will go really well with this. Now I'm going to make a pelmet out of this as well, which uh, which I'll do a video on making the pelmet to go over the top of the window. So I want some of this fabric showing at the bottom of my blind. So I'm going to take 10 centimetres of this fabric and add it on to the bottom of my other fabric, which I'll sew on in a minute. But um, let's just talk about the, the measurements again. So we've got our length, we've got our width now. Now we need to figure out where our pocket holes are going to go. Now with Roman blinds, you can do it in a way, well, you can do it in loads of ways, but two of the, the, the um, most popular way is that when they hang, you have your top and then they fold up like so, so that when they're hanging in the window, you only see the top fold. Now if you want it like this, then what you need to do is measure your pocket holes so that they are evenly spread out. So that when it folds up, you only see the top part. However, I don't like Roman blinds like that. I like them to be... So when... Excuse the dog. Somebody's... Hang on, because I think I've got a delivery. No, no delivery, just a tractor going past. Um, so I like my Roman blinds to be so that you can see the different levels of folds in it. So that it will hang like so. That's the way I like it. So it's up to you the way you do it. If you want to do it this way so you see your folds, then you need to stagger your measurements. So I'll show you how I've done that. I'm going to measure mine for my pocket hole to be 25 for my first pocket hole. And leave two centimetres either side. And then from the middle of the pocket hole, I'm going to measure 35 for my second one. Two centimetres either side. Oh. And for my last one, 45. So I've added 10 centimetres on each pocket hole. And then that also means my bottom part will hang down enough to show that nice little bit of fabric on the end. So. So just to recap, each pocket hole will have an extra 10 centimetres as it goes down. And that means it will show all the layers, which I think looks really nice. So I'm just going to measure that out. Uh, if you can see some blue lines I did before. Um, and then I changed my mind as to where I wanted the folds. And it really doesn't matter. It's up to you where you want those folds um, and how far apart you want them but try to make it so they've got the same distance between each one. Now this is uh, dressmaker's chalk, so it will just uh, 
come out. So, that's all my measurements done. So the first job is then to do your seam allowance, fold it over, iron it, and then sew it. Now I'm just going to cut this bottom off because I don't want this. And as I said before, what I'm going to do is add in an extra piece of material. So I'll do that quickly, add in the extra piece of material. Now obviously if you don't want um, a decorative bottom or anything, uh, then you just literally sew your hem up. And forget about this stage. Okay, so I've got my bit of fabric for the bottom. Yeah. And what we're going to do first is do a side hem. So I've measured out the hem I want. Now, as I said, I'm doing a short hem, a small hem. But I would suggest that you do... Um, a one inch double fold something like that um, especially if it's it's thinner material but this is really thick material um, so I've got my lining inside my fabric over the top I folded it over I've run the iron down it just to uh, to give it a line for me now if you don't like sewing and you don't have a sewing machine you don't actually have to sew it what you can use is the ironing web um, I've got some here it's um, it's literally iron-on hemming web, and uh, you just stick it in the middle, iron it down, and it glues it. However, if you want to be able to remove these and put them in the washing machine, then I would suggest you sew it because the um, hemming web doesn't do very well in washing machines. It eventually comes apart, so uh, it's not that withstanding. So the first thing is to do your side hems. Um, so sew up your two side hems. I'll do that quickly now. Okay, so I have my two side hems that have been sewn. And uh, with my lining fabric inside. Now this is my the top. And uh, we folded it over once. I folded it over once. I haven't sewn it. I folded it over once. And then it will be folded over again. So I'm just going to iron down where it's going to be folded over again. To give myself a good line. Now what you need is some Velcro. Where's my Velcro? So you want a piece of Velcro for the top, measure it out. And this piece of Velcro is going to be stuck to a piece of wood, which I will show you very shortly. And this piece of Velcro, you want to sew into the top part of your turnover, of your hem. But you want to do it before you turn the hem over. So I'm going to sew that in now. And you want a little gap at the top so that it overhangs on the fabric. Um, so that will go in there like so. Can you see that? Okay. Let's get rid of my iron. Check you can see that okay. So this is my top and the Velcro is going to go in here. So I'm just going to pin that in now. Thank you, baby. 
I need a bit of wood for the top. Oh, flipping hell. <laughs> S'il vous plaît. Yeah, done. Okay, so, as you can see, ow, ow. Do you want it thin or it. thick? Um, what does it matter? Like we had before? Yeah, that or thinner. 12 mil. Just so it goes on the window. 12 mil. So, I've um, pinned my um, Velcro on there, so I'm going to sew that now. Is that too thin? Too thin that way? No. Is that that's fine? fine. Thickness-wise? Yeah. yeah. That way is fine? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so... We've done our two side seams. We've got our Velcro on the top. Just cut some of this cotton off. So now it's time to do our, our bot, uh, pocket holes. So lift up your pocket holes. On the middle line that you marked, and my middle line. just give it a quick iron just to again mark that line in properly and stick a couple of pins in now what you're going to do is sew along your second line so we shall pin that one pin our next one Now my bottom one, you want the bottom part to obviously be heavy enough. Um, now ignore what I'm doing because this is because I am adding my bottom piece of fabric to it. But what you would normally do is do your double fold on your fabric and you would sew along here the top line and the bottom line allowing for a dowel to go through the bottom part like so. So the dowel will fit in there and you will sew either side along so you've got an opening either end and that will weigh down the bottom of your, your blind. So now we've got our pocket holes um, all pinned in, I'm going to take them over to the sewing machine and start sewing. Okay, so I've got all my pocket holes in place, all done. I'm just going to trim off my bits of cotton. That's what the front looks like. So just iron out your, your seams. Okay, 
So now I need to add the bottom part to mine. Um, and obviously form the bottom part. Thank you very much, darling. Oh, that's quite a good little thing, isn't it? What's that? that? Yeah. standing in front of a caravan and um, and it's all very dark and uh, and dreary here. That's because I'm in a barn that has a caravan in it and that's what we're living in at the moment. And we don't have any um, lighting in here or um, proper electrics. It's just uh, temporary um, cables running everywhere. So that would be why. Right. Okay, so I've sewn one side in and then I'm doubling up and hands stop it. Pull that down, just iron that out. Hands, what is the matter? to go and play with the cows over the road. Okay, so now I'm going to fold that over. Now, obviously, I need a pocket hole here as well. So, once I've sewn it in, I'm then going to sew another line. I'm just going to mark my line for my pocket hole. Let's just check. That's going to go in there. So, I'm just going to draw my line now underneath there. in there because I might as well sew that at the same time. So we've got a curtain finished, a Roman blind finished, uh, we've got our pocket holes in and uh, what we need to do now is attach some uh, little rings for our cords to go through. Um, now Depending on what cord you can use, um, what you cord you want to use, literally, it depends on what you find in the cupboard, basically. Um, I found this piece of leather that uh, was used, I think my, it was my daughter's, when she was doing some bracelet making. Um, now, that will be perfectly fine. It's very sturdy. You can buy a cord that is thicker, a bit like shoelace cord. Um, you can use rope, string, you can use anything you want as long as it's going to be strong enough to be able to withstand putting up and down your Roman blind. Now, 
what you then need is some little hooks. Um, I've got some washers here that Ted's given me and I'm going to sew them on. Now all you need is them big enough to be able to fit your string, rope, whatever it is you're using through. So I'm going to start sewing them on. Let's start at the bottom. Now the bottom isn't going to be pulled up. It's going to have the pipe in it um, but it isn't going to be drawn up so I don't need the hooks in there. This is the first one that's going to be drawn up, so that's where I need uh, the hooks to go. Now I'm afraid for this part, you do need a needle and cotton, and you do need to hand sew it. So I'll hand sew them in, and then I'll show you them very shortly. Okay, so we're almost at the end of our Roman blind session. So we've got our Roman blind, we've got our Velcro at the top. Um, and for me, I've got my bottom piece of fabric. Turn it over, and we've got air pocket holes for air dowels. And I've sewn in, as you can see here, let's just fold them up so you can see them all together, three loops, um, three, what they're called, washers, three washers. Um, you don't necessarily on this size of blind need three, but I've put three just to be on the safe side. And then what we do is we pop a dowel inside. So we've got a dowels, or in my case, copper piping in the um, pocket holes. So that's about it. It's now time to put the string in and sort out the the bit of wood at the top so let's try that so what you will need is a piece of wood good old Ted's cut me a piece of wood and I've painted it and it's the same size as the window so just a bit smaller actually so it fits just inside the uh, the blind now you remember we stitched on top the um, the bit of outcro and uh, I have that here. So what we need to do is be able to stick that to that. So with that piece of wood, I've got my other bit of Velcro. Oh, keeps sticking to me. And we need to attach this to the piece of wood. Now the best way to be able to do that, slightly too long, so let me cut a little bit off. Um, I've got a staple gum. But if you haven't got a staple gun, you can use the stick-on Velcro. But if you want to take it off quite a lot and be able to um, wash your blinds, then the sticky stuff is not going to, to be able to withstand still a bit long. Um, coming off and on. So you really need to be able to either have a staple gun or get some nails and just with large heads on them and voila one piece of wood with a bit of velcro stuck to the top of it so air blind well now that will be secure to the top of the window and air blind will just stick straight on it like so there you go so now for air bits of string what you will need is three hooks I think they're called eyes we call them hooks and eyes I think in the UK and these are the eye parts, so little loops. And they are going to go one, two, three into a piece of wood. So I'm just going to get a start on the hole. And you need one there. Measure it up, one in the middle. And one on the end. and just screwing
Okay, so we've got air hooks in the top. Now don't forget this part is going to be what's going to be attached to the window. Now I was going to use this leather but suddenly realised I don't think I've got enough. I'm just going to measure it but this one's got to go up and all the way along so I need it at least that length. This one's got to go all the way along and down and then I did have one more piece. Where's my other bit that I had? Just for the sake of finishing the blinds so you can see them, I'm going to use this white um, thread that I've got. And uh, it will do for now, and then I can replace it when I actually put the blinds up. So what you do is go to the bottom and put your thread in. Put your thread up. Now it depends what side you want to pull the blinds up. For me, I want to pull this blind up this side. On this side. So let's just pull them up so you can see them. So I'm going to cut my bit of string off, make sure you've got plenty and tie it to the bottom piece, thread all the next piece through and again make sure you've got plenty. tight on the bottom. And the last and final one, now the reason why I won't, I'll have to replace this is because it is just nylon um, sort of thick thread so it will obviously um, going up and down it won't withstand that so it's not really strong enough and I don't really want it to be white so I will replace it as soon as I get some more leather thread or black something black okay so I've got my three bits of string that are attached from the bottom and up all of the loops and then what I want to do is because I want the pulley to be on this side this one goes all the way through so it goes through this one this one and this one now if you want it pulled the other side you'll do it the other way around I then take the middle one and that just goes through the middle hole and the last hole and then the third one just goes through the last hole so I've got my three bits of string together now now you want to pull them so they are or let the blind drop and then pull them so they're all taut. So let me just lay that out for you. Oh. Hopefully you can see that. We've got three pieces of strings going up, all looping through to this side. What happens is, as you hold it up, the blind folds up. And as you can see, my bottom nice bit of fabric is still there for you to be able to see. Now, one last thing. I think that looks rather gorgeous. Um, 
you will need some sort of weight um, or something on the end to keep these together. Now, I don't even remember when we first moved here and we were sorting through all of the apartments, all of the rooms upstairs. Um, in one of the treasure videos we did, I found a whole bag of these old keys. Um, hopefully you can see that. And uh, I thought, what a good way to use it. I've been trying to think of how can I use these keys for so long. So what you need to do is let your rope go down so you know where to, uh, where to put it. And tie your weight or your key, if you have one, like me, onto the end. There you go, got my key, got my moment blind, and I just pull my key and up it goes. Now I think that looks rather fabulous. I'm extremely pleased with that. Now all it needs to be done is attach the window. I'm not going to attach this just yet because obviously I've got another two to do to go into the other panes and I've got the pound to make. But um, here's one I made earlier. Okay, so this is the set I made the other day. Curtains, helmet, and behind them blinds. Now I have got to um, attach the hooks up yet. To the keep the curtains back. But um, I think they look rather lovely. I'm pleased with it. Um, so the blind that I want to show you, I'm just going to move the curtains out of the way so that you can see the blind. Um, no, I haven't put my key on this one yet, so I need to do that. Um, but uh, let me just unwind it and uh, pop it down. And as you can see, fits lovely. And then just hold it back up again, and up it goes. So yeah, this is how easy it is to make lovely power with some lovely curtains and a Roman pint. So hopefully, Whilst we are all in this awful state of lockdown and not being allowed to go out and uh, buy things, um, everybody in their cupboards has a pieces of fabric and um, bits of string and bits of dowel or wood or something you can use. The good thing about this is you don't need to buy anything. You don't need to spend money on a Roman blind kit. You can just find stuff that you've got in your cupboard or in your loft and, uh, and make it with that. And if you don't have long enough pieces of fabric, all you do is put bits together because where you've got the dowel pockets that's where you join your fabric um so there you go there's my roman blind for you <laughs>